What's up everybody, welcome back. I've been asked to do this video about a thousand times and finally have an opportunity to do it, so here we are. We're gonna take this turbocharged LS setup. Uh, we're gonna start with the ignition timing really low, uh, bump it up a couple of degrees at a time and then compare the runs. The only change that we're gonna do between the runs is just the ignition timing. We're gonna try and keep everything else the same. Any other advanced tables all be zeroed out. Knock control is gonna be zeroed out and disabled. Cooling fans are being controlled by the ECU, so they all turn on and off at the same temperatures. The big fan in front of the car is being controlled by the dyno, uh, which will also turn that fan on and off at the same times. To keep the runs themselves consistent, uh, we're gonna actually activate all of the runs at the same RPM. Uh, we're gonna use a boost pressure sensor for the dyno and activate the runs at three PSI. We'll be using Holly EFI for the tuning. Uh, this particular car has HP ECU, but this would be the same if you were using the Terminator X. To take all of these timing values with a grain of salt, just because the values end up at a certain number on this vehicle does not mean that they're going to be the same for yours. See drastic timing differences from one car to the next, even with very similar modifications. Proper care and caution needs to be taken. If you blow your car up, uh, that's on you. I've also disconnected the CO2 bottle, so we're running just off of the wastegate, so that will keep the boost as accurate and as consistent as physically possible with what we have to work with here. Sometimes when you excessively retard ignition timing, the boost can go up, so we'll keep an eye on that. All right, that's enough flapping my lips. Let's warm the car up and get started. Would you who shut is up, your, man? Listen, who is so this is not the tune file for the car. This is basically everything flatlined and zeroed out and made to where when we make the runs, we're gonna have a fixed value the whole way. Um, so don't think that this is how this car was gonna leave here. So our dome pressure is zeroed out and our CO2 bottle is disconnected. Uh, the learn table is all zeroed out because the learn is disabled. Target air fuel is just 1150 everywhere. For fuel modifiers, everything once the car is warmed up is either zero or 100. 100 uh, when it's a percentage enrichment, uh, 100 is the equivalent of zero. Air temp enrichment is 100%. Coolant based timing is just zeroed out. Timing versus air temp is just zeroed out. Did not control is zeroed out. So basically what we're trying to achieve here is anything over 100 kPa or anything in boost, we're gonna have a fixed timing value. So we're gonna start at eight degrees. We're gonna go up two degrees at a time until it gets to the point where we need to stop. Closed loop is turned on and it's off at idle and it looks like we got 30% everywhere else. So again, we're trying to maintain a fixed air fuel for all of the runs and the fuel curve has been tuned so it's within a couple of percent so it should be pretty flat there all right this thing should be a big fat turret at eight eight degrees yeah definitely a big fat turret there's 482 horsepower Boost is a little choppy, but we're going to basically call this about 9 PSI. And the torque is so high up here because the converter is pretty loose. Now let's go look at a holly log and make sure that the timing is what we commanded. Okay, if we scroll through the log, we can see the boost is about 8, 9 PSI. Fueling's right where we want it to be. Actual ignition timing is 8 degrees, and then the base timing is 8 degrees, which basically means we don't have any corrections going on. So let's try 10 degrees and see what that does. Every single cell that's eight degrees, make it 10. Send it to the ECU, let's give it a try. A little bit better. Now it does look like there's a slight variation in boost. It's mostly because of the scaling on this is so tight it makes it look all jagged and jacked up. But it's pretty close. And if we look over here at power total, uh, so at about 28, 30, 33, 36. Uh, so it picked up a decent amount of power. So if we scroll through this log, we can see that the boost is like a little bit lower. But like I said before, with the timing really retarded, it's not uncommon to see the boost be a little bit higher, but we're talking less than a PSI, so it's pretty much irrelevant. And our timing is 10 degrees. Um, air fuel is exactly the same.
73, 74 horsepower from 8 degrees. Let's take a look at the log. Boost appears to be stabilizing a lot better. And we're right at 12 degrees. About 2% correction, 3% correction. But actual air fuel is maintained. It's the same as it was before. Man, Son of a bitch! Trying to fool with too many cameras and shit all at the same time. Alright, so we do have 14 degrees this time. Air fuel's right on the money. Zero. Correction. So 558 horsepower this time. Again, here's overlaying all of our other runs, and you can see the difference between all of them. Let's give 16 degrees a go. Battery's on its last leg. Looks like we're still picking up about 20 horsepower. Everything looks about the same. If anything, the boost is actually a hair lower. I think this is the first time I've seen a dip into the sevens. Uh, timing is 16 and our fueling's, everything's still the same there. See what 18 will do. can see that the power gains are starting to become a little bit lower now so looking at it this way blue is 8 degrees red is 18 degrees and as I said before we even got started you can see there's a little um, a little more boost with less timing and if we scroll through here and we look over here at power total you can see we're up a hundred where to go 107 111, 115, 126, 27, yeah, it's about 120 horsepower. We should got our 18 degrees, looks like it actually wants a touch more fuel, but you'll see that the fueling will kind of vary run to run, even if you don't make any changes. And looks like the boost is 7.9, 7.7, 7.8. So to really compare apples and apples, if you threw an extra pound of boost at this to maintain what it did at eight, 8 degrees, then these numbers would be even higher. But I think this is more of a fair comparison since the boost numbers were higher um, with the lower timing um, as a result of the timing. So I see that pretty frequently. All right, I'm going to call this video quits here. There's conveniently a goddamn chainsaw out in the parking lot now, so uh, that makes making a video a little bit tough. When I tuned this car before doing this video, I did actually put a little time in it past the 18 degrees. Um, it picked up a couple of horsepower. I want to say it was like 599 or something. So it was just shy of 600. Um, I'm sure if we let it cool off, uh, you know, it might just flirt with that 600 horsepower number without touching the boost or making any other mechanical changes. What's ironic with uh, all the different tunes and cars that we see come through the door, a majority of them on the domestic side of things are usually giving up 75 to 100 horsepower uh, you know for the setup so either street tuned or internet guest tuned or you know whatever that is so definitely very worthwhile to put your car on the dyno and, and actually calibrate it correctly on the flip side of it we also see a whole bunch of cars that would come in with 25 degrees uh, given the same set of you know shit that's on this car and uh you know then you tear stuff up and and push a bunch of parts out of it and 
that's no fun for anybody. This car did tend to fall right in line of what I would consider to be normal timing values, giving the boost and the fuel and all that good stuff. So um, every now and then you come across one that wants you know five, six degrees less than this, or maybe wants four or five degrees more than this. So uh, regardless of how many cars I've done with exactly the same modification, same fuel, same gas station, same everything, um, I don't go quite that low on the timing, but I always start significantly lower than I think I'm going to end up. Walk it up and then make sure that that is in fact what the car wants. If you've made it this far into the video, it's time for a giveaway. Uh, you have, the winner will have their choice either between uh, Sequence Manufacturing, Stainless Bros, uh, T4 or T6 uh, turbo flange. Uh, it has provisions for mounting uh, the turbocharger to support the weight of the turbo without actually having to weld anything uh, directly to the piping or anything like that. We have 8th inch MPT bungs in multiple locations for either back pressure or EGTs or however you choose to use them. Uh, they are investment cast, they are machined, uh, they are decked flat. Um, unlike some other options that can be very difficult to fit in the car because they're 80 feet long, uh, these are pretty short, however uh, they are not Super short like some of the other options where you get really harsh entries right into the turbo. Uh, everything was CAD designed to flow as good as possible while being as small and easy to use as possible. And the inlets are actually splayed as well to allow for easy welding on the inside. And the other option that you would have, again, sequence manufacturing or stainless bros uh, wastegate merge adapter. Uh, these are available with two and a quarter or two and a half inch inlet and outlet. Uh, so you have exhaust flow going this way and this is offset as you can see to allow priority into the wastegate uh, and then you go from here to your turbocharger. Um, so we use these a lot. Uh, you know we use two of these, one of these and now you can build your turbo kit in uh, 1 64th of the amount of time as it would usually take. And another thing to take note is uh, this weld right here where the wastegate is, is the primary failure of basically any turbo kit. Uh, as this is all investment cash, you no longer have to worry about that. So if you'd like to win one of those, just do the usual nonsense, like the video, uh, make sure you subscribed, and then comment below. Um, I have found that a lot of people watching these videos are from crazy parts of the world, countries I've never heard of. Uh, so when you drop your comment, just uh, let me know where you're from. And that's the end of my story.